And these are examples. And this one, we have to give credit to someone I think that inspires most of us, which is Steve Jobs. Now, Steve Jobs is not a genius because he makes this. Everyone looks at Apple and they say, oh, it's very, the computer is really nice the way they've evolved, right? Cutting edge. And then he did the iPod. And then he did the iPhone. And then the iPad. And I'm going to argue that is not Apple's model. Those are just the touch points. Everyone who looks at Apple, they keep talking about how brilliantly he's created these products and how he's deployed it in the market. They don't understand what Apple is about. You do, because you're at University of Chicago, <laughs> right? I hope. So he could give these away for free. And this would still be a brilliant, profitable company, even though it now has $74 billion cash. He could give these away for free. Do you know why? Who has another Apple? Pull up an Apple, someone. Great. This is not a phone. This is the port of Singapore or Changi Airport. And this is the port of Shanghai. And I'm going to take things that physically moved between the ports, and I'm going to convert them to virtual. Everyone who has this is a supply chain of a knowledge network. What he really did was he put tools in the hands deployed around the world to exploit the knowledge network and move product virtually in a way that no one has. Where Victor Fong has turned factories into virtual factories. Steve Jobs has taken fixed product and turned it virtual, kind of like Star Trek. So, I'm going to argue it's not about these devices. It's about being the knowledge network orchestration company. And I'm, I'm taking these devices and they're becoming physical ports just like the port of Singapore outside my house and Changi. This is now a device to move product. I used to buy DVDs and move them by ship. Now I move them virtually. I used to buy movies and television shows and then ship them. Now I don't. Movies to theaters would go out and then touch the audience. Now he's virtualized the audiences away from the theaters. So, digital media plus. Plus because there's so much more. There's newspapers. There's magazines. Yeah, he took part of the Amazon model too. There, there's books. There's music. There's university lectures. There's so much more evolving on this every week. So he's taking things that used to move physically and now we're buying them virtually. So you pay a hundred million dollars to, to produce a movie. I'm, and some, one of my things I'm involved in now is, is movie, th movie industry too. And you do something with a movie, you pay a hundred million dollars and then you have to distribute it all over the world. And you have all the risks. But if you access his knowledge network, with hundreds of millions of, of con tens of millions of consumers around the world, he has no risk, but he controls the highway. And therefore, he basically has no risk, and he's taking a percentage cut on every movie, on every TV show, on every song. If it fails, it's not his risk. If it succeeds, he gets a cut on all of it. And, he, and they're just looking, what else can they add to the digital media plus? Every month they're thinking of new things to add, to virtualize. Product that now moves virtually. And we haven't even started. So many more things can be done. And then you have digitized knowledge. I like this word. I kind of played with it yesterday when I was thinking of a slide for you. Digitized knowledge. He has an apps army of 300,000 people in every continent of the world. And he's adding thousands more every month and they pay him a salary. They pay him. So you have this army of programmers in Africa, in America, in Europe, in Singapore, maybe even in this room. And a friend of mine did, uh, what is it called? Uh, turbinizer. And he, turbinizer. I was with him today, Ash Singh. And uh, he did Turbinizer. Oh good, you saw it. And he has uh, 88,000 hits already on Turbinizer. And he projects he'll be, he'll be at a million hits in a few more months. 
right? He made it up for fun in Singapore at Clark Key, by the way. And worldwide, it's a huge hit in America now, right? So now all these people are designing products in every category imaginable, unlimited knowledge, infinite content. There's no limit to this anywhere in the world. And if Apple allows them to access their knowledge network through their ports, Apple will take 30% of the revenue. And this army is growing and it's controlled by them and the army pays Apple a salary with no risk. How can you not love this business model? Digitized knowledge, virtual programmers. Lian Fung has virtual factories. Apple has virtual programmers. I love the word virtual. It's real today. It is real and infinite content. So the knowledge network orchestrator with 74 billion plus in the bank and cash right now is taking digital media plus constant evolution and digitized knowledge. And they're combining it to feed the global consumer where instead of going to a store, I just press a button and I have it. It wasn't about this. It was about that. No one got it. He's much more brilliant than you thought. These are simply the touch points of converting physical ports to knowledge network ports. That's why Apple is a brilliant company.